It was sometime during February or March 1975, an ordinary day like any other. A drizzle of rain mixed with a hint of snow drifted across the land. The season for awakening from hibernation was almost at hand. Naturally, the snow would no longer remain. It would often disappear without a trace. The snow would melt and disappear even before it touched the ground, as if it was never there. The long and freezing winter on the Les Plateau appeared to be approaching its end, but the true warmth of spring was still a far cry away. On this day, when sleet was falling from the sky, the streets and alleyways of the county town were quieter than they usually are. Only halfway up the hill, in the large courtyard of the county high school, does a scene of bustling noise and activity begin to fill the air. For Sen Xiaoping, studying in this school is already in itself too difficult that the family allowed a young man like him to eat for free without earning any work points and let him attend high school in the county town were already proving itself to be a difficult situation. Xiaoping was aware that the conditions at home were now already close to the point of becoming totally bleak. It is for this reason that he felt inferior in his current environment. And despite the fact that he was the tallest student in his class, given the situation at home, he always felt he was a head shorter than the rest. And poverty made him guard his self-esteem excessively. No wonder I never see you at mealtime. You've been hiding here. Hey, why are you eating those steamed black buns? You don't even buy the five cent meal C. Everyone's gone back to the dorm to eat. It's too cold out here. Are you here because of that girl? Ever since school began, during every mealtime, the two of us are always the last in our class. And we always take two black steam buns. You two have standing lunch dates? We're not dating. It's only been a couple of days. You are the only one I know here. We're in the same school and from the same village. I haven't talked to anyone else. You... So I'm guessing... Oh, guessing what? 
Come on, tell me. She gets her meal when everybody's gone. For the same reason as mine. She's poor. We can't afford the good meals. Because... We are young and we're too ashamed. We wait for everyone to leave before we go out there to get our two lousy black steam buns. At this time in the life of Sen Xiaoping, there was actually another ineffable, otherwise insignificant thing that brought a little warmth and joy to his otherwise depressed inner soul. And that is that every day at lunch, he was able to see a beautiful girl named Hao Hongmei. At first, they communicated without talking, but through an exchange of glances. Hey. Huh? I heard teacher confiscated your book. What was its title? Red Crag. I borrowed it at the county library. Oh, there's a sister Zhang in it. Yes, she died in the book. She was brave. Right. Have you read this book? No, I haven't. But I do know the story because my father told me. He, he attended school? Father never went to school. My grandfather taught him how to read. My father is a peasant. He has a bad standing. It's my grandfather. It's all because he was a landowner. So, I was wondering, when teacher returns the book to you, maybe you could lend it to me. Of course. <laughs> I feel sorry for you. It's such a cold day, you should feel sorry for me too. Sen Xiaowan, who was away from home, was in the animal quarantine shed of the veterinary station in Mitsia town. He was busy tending to the sick cow of the production team, giving it medicine. This was their best cow. It was the lifeblood upon which Here, the entire team this. depended on. When the cow fell ill, he seemed to have fallen ill too. The faint yellow street lamps shone on his tall and large build. The contours of his face and his physique were very similar to his younger brother Xiaoping's. In one glance, one could easily see that this was a man who has had some experience in life. Active labor had made him appear somewhat stronger than Xiaoping, but appearances are deceiving. this? Are you drunk? Get inside here and close the door. What do you want? Nothing, nothing. You know, old master, your accent sounds so familiar. Are you from Henan? Yes, you're right. The blacksmiths working on this plateau are mostly from Henan. <laughs> I knew it. It's unmistakable. Uh, uh. They call you the gypsies of China. <laughs> they say you could meet someone from Henan anywhere you go. We're not like gypsies. Those nomads wander around doing no work at all. Whenever you see any of us, we're always working. Always! <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're not from Mija Town, are you? No, I'm from Shangshui Village. From which team? The first team. Huh. There's a leader in Team 1 named Sun Xiaowan. Did I get that right? You know about Sun Xiaowan? Good heavens, the people from his village often come here. They talk about him all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I am Sun Xiaowan. Are you really Sun Xiaowang? The very same. Oh my goodness. Come here. Sit, 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 sit. No, it's have okay. It's okay. Please, please, please don't seat. bother. Please. But sir, I insist. why sit are down. you doing this? I'm fine. <laughs> there you are. Feel at home, okay? You. I can see you're a strong man. It's cold out there. But look at your clothes. <laughs> well, sir, it's because I had to bring my cow to this veterinary station in Mija Town to see the vet. Oh. <laughs> so I had to put my jacket on the cow it's freezing. I don't want the cow to freeze to death. Have you found a place to stay? Well, I was thinking about lodging for the night with a cow in the cow shed, but I'm frozen by the wind blowing through the crossroads of Mija, so I couldn't. Is that <laughs> so? Why not stay in a hotel then? 
I can't do that. It's too expensive. I've already spent enough on the cow's visit to the vet. I can't spend any more. I want to save money for the team. You see? No wonder. That's why they made you leader at the age of 18. You're great. <laughs> Brother, listen. Don't go anywhere. When I'm done working here, I'll make space for you. You can sleep here. <laughs> Thank you, Master. Ah. I'd really appreciate what you're doing for me. Thank you. <laughs> After the hibernation, nature's colors sprang forth around the school campus. Sen Xiaoping spent his days generally the same way he usually does. You're back. What are you doing here? I asked Runcheng to invite you to eat at our place. Where were you? I have something to tell you. So tell me. Come. Come eat at my house first. Then I'll tell you when you're done. But Come I didn't on. say yes yet. Sin Xiaoping certainly did not expect this invitation to have lunch at someone else's house. He was wondering what Runchang's elder sister wanted with him. Besides, she invited him to the house of Runchang's second uncle. He was a deputy director of the county revolutionary committee, and he was considered a big shot in the county. This made Sen Xiaoping even more afraid and uneasy. Oh, you're back, sister. <laughs> oh, wow. You really pulled that off. You got Xiaoping to come. <laughs> so you're from the family of the secretary. Looks like you picked up the usual habits as well. Tell me, is this yours? I'm going to the movie house now. I have to go. Oh. See you later. I'll talk to him next time. Let's later. Go. Wait, Runya. What do you want from me exactly? Why don't you tell me here? This is the cadre leader's home. I cannot go in. Let's go. Come. When Runya was just a little girl, she used to play with Sen Xiaoping's big brother, time. and the Let two of see. them attended the I'll same primary here. school. Runya later on went to the county town for her secondary education. His big brother returned to the village, where he became a peasant due to poverty. But still, Runya treated his big brother the same way she used to treat him. Xiaoping, in his heart, had great respect for Runya and has always felt grateful towards her. Xiaoping? Uh, yes? Here. It's called soda. I've seen this before. During the school sports day, I saw people drink it. <laughs> Why don't you sit down? No, that chair is very soft. I'm not used to that. This is called a sofa chair. Uh, it's supposed to be soft. Look, there are springs inside. When I first sat on one, it felt weird. <laughs> You'll get used to it. Oh, that's the bottle opener. Uh, I'll get you your meal. It's ready now. I have something to tell you. Wait, Runya. I won't be eating. Why won't you eat? You say I'm like a sister to you, and I treat you like a brother just like Run Sheng. So why are you distant to me? All right then. If you won't eat, then don't call me sister. Uh, what do you really need from me? We've already eaten. This was kept especially for you. Look, pork braised with cabbage and the steamed bun. It's white. <laughs> yes. Hey, why don't you take a seat? Don't just stand there. Your brother specifically told me to treat you to a proper meal whenever I had time. So let me tell you this. If you don't finish all this food today, you can't call me sister anymore. <laughs> I'm putting out the fire on the stove. Now eat up. Sure. Sen Xiaoping felt peculiar. He felt a sensation in his throat. The aroma of the pork and the vegetables and the steamed buns made him feel a little faint. His heart was filled with gratitude and he greatly appreciated what Runya had done for him. But had she not left him alone, he wouldn't have enjoyed the tasty meal. There's someone in the house. Who is it? Xiaoping is here. Xiaoping? 
Isn't he the second son of your Uncle Yuha? Yes. I've heard about him. Your father and your Uncle Yuha worked together since they were kids and they were good friends. Your second uncle used to follow them all the time. And apparently, during the armed conflict in 1969, your Uncle Yuha had saved your uncle's life. Oh. Uh, hey, Auntie? Aren't you going to talk to him? Oh, I can't. I have to go to work. Hey, wait. I need to talk to you. Remember Li Shengshan, the boy I introduced to you? What do you think of him? Why did you refuse to meet with him? His mother wants an appointment. You're invited to their house. Will you go? Why are you so quiet? I want to know what you think. You're always avoiding him. Do you have a boyfriend now? Do you? I'm done, Runya. It was great. <sighs> so, sister, what's the matter? I saw you with your aunt just now. You were talking outside. She mentioned someone to you. And when you came back, it's like you're somebody else. What's going on with you? Oh, <laughs> I had too much to eat, so I stood up. I just ate five steamed buns and also a big plate of meat and vegetables. And I had three bottles of soda. A little too much, right? You should eat a little more Sister! Then. Uh -huh. <laughs> Xiao Ping? This is Xiao Xia, my uncle's daughter. As soon as Xiao Ping saw this girl, his face began to feel as hot as coal fire. The clothes that Tian Xiao Xia was wearing Sorry, were the same you, kind that a boy would home. wear, but to um, her it was nothing. Um, it was something that he found surprising. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll get you your tea. You know, we're fellow villagers here. Next time, come over if you're not busy. You know, I may be 17 already, but I never had a chance to go to our village. Oh, hey, I have an idea. Runsheng and I can go to Shuangshui with you. Why don't we go there together? Actually, Runsheng told me that there were two other students that also come from our village. Too bad I'm not from the same class, you know? I haven't had a chance to know you all a little better. We're from the same village. <laughs> so that's a real shame. Runya, huh? if there's nothing else, I'd like to go now. Huh? We still haven't talked. Wait for me. I won't take long. I'll get changed and I'll walk with you. Right. Here, have some water. Uh, I'm okay. Now look at what you've done. You've wasted a glass of water. <laughs> Let's go. Come. Mm -hmm. uh, my belly's about to burst. It's really hard to walk. <laughs> <sighs> this isn't funny at all, sister. You're the reason why I ate so much back there. If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't even eat. <laughs> You know, I consider you someone really close to my heart. That's why I overate without caring. That's good then. Hey, are you going home this Saturday? Yes. When you go back home, tell your brother to come visit me. I haven't seen him in a while. I don't know. Our home is a real mess right now. I don't think my brother will have time. That's not good. <sighs> well, anyway, tell him I invited him. Tell him something's bothering me. Tell him to visit me at the Second County High School. Yes, I will tell him. You can count on it. <sighs> Terrific. <sighs> hey, sister. I heard your conversation with your aunt just now. You told her that you have a boyfriend. So who's your boyfriend? <sighs> All right. Take a deep breath. Smell the green grass and earth in the air. Fragrant, right? This is the smell of spring. Ugh. 
That's yours. Huh? What is this? Those are meal tickets for wheat flour and rice, okay? See you. That was 1975. It was back then when the string of the rural class struggle was tightly stretched. Nothing could be done without any criticism from the revolutionaries. I was so afraid. I thought they were going to drag Mangya out to be shot. Then I heard somebody say something. That he's been taken to the village. To be re-educated. It is so heavy on my heart. My child's father has never suffered. But look at him now. He will suffer and surely die. <laughs> oh, Shang. Gone? Who shot who? Is there a revolution going on? Huh? Where have all the troops gone? Have they gone to Shuangshui village? We have to flee. What is the use of sitting there and crying? Where are the men in this family when you need them? At this point, Sun Yu Ho has become numb from the hardships of life. Once he found out his useless son-in-law was taken for re-education, the old Sun Yu Ho found himself hating the ground for not opening up and swallowing him whole. Brother Yu Ha, are you going or not? We need to know. Look, Shigeja Commune's deputy director Xu Xi Go personally paid you a visit. He came here to ask you to speak at the meeting about your son-in-law. That is an honor. You have a chance to show everyone you have a clear stand. You choose justice over family. It's for the revolution. Hey, Brother Yuha, are you listening? Did you hear me? Director Shi, I choose not to speak. Old man, this is not an option. He must be Anan. I'm certain that it was Anan who has been shot dead. <laughs> no, elder brother is fine. Sister is crying for brother-in-law. Brother-in-law? What happened? He made a little mistake. He was only selling rat poison in the streets. Militiamen came and pointed their guns at him, and they arrested him. <gasps> Jin Fu Jin Kang, you're here. Yes, we're here now. Lan Wang. Uh, please, prepare some rations and beddings. Bring them to the Tsinxiawan school. The arrested people will be there. This is simply outrageous. If only Xiaowan were here, maybe I wouldn't feel so worried. Why don't you arrest me as well, you monsters? Huh? Why don't you arrest me? Arrest me! Why don't you? Hello, Uncle. Uncle Yuha, to tell you the truth, if you don't go and speak out, you'll see. They will just arrest you as well. You're the deputy secretary. You can speak on my behalf. I will not. I can't speak without swearing. I would sound like I'm scolding them. If you do that, you're scolding yourself. You shame yourself. You disgrace your ancestors. They'd be so embarrassed. They'd be rolling around inside their graves. They would also regret not shooting you on the wall to feed the house flies. <laughs> Such a waste. You ha! The water is boiling. Pour the water into the flask. Yes. Uncle Juin Shan. Oh, Lanhua, hello. You ha. I won't speak. You don't have a choice. Go on, refuse. I'll tie you up. You're going to that meeting and you will speak. <sighs> Chin Fu, Chin Xiao. You two, stop right there. You're forcing someone who can't speak to speak. If you really can't speak, you don't have to speak. Move! What? Oh, father! What? Father! What are you father! doing to you? Stop it! No, no, God, you no, stop no, it! No, are you no, crazy? No. Bring him out here! No, See if he's all right! I hope he's all right! I'm all right! Are 
Are you all right? Yes, I'll be all right. There's cold water in the flask. It wasn't even hot. Oh, you ha! Huh? You really don't know how to lie. You could have lied about the water. You wouldn't have to speak at the meeting. I thought you had a countermeasure to get out of this. I've never lied before. I don't know how. What? Yes. Go. Please boil more water. This time, I will drink it for real. I'll drink the whole thing. What? Father! Ah, don't forget to tell him all about the leadership's decision. The leadership has decided. You don't have to speak at the meeting. Go on then. We'll talk later. Thank goodness for that. Sen Xiao Wan had a bite to eat at a nearby diner. He then went to the veterinary station to get his cow and started his trip back to Shuangshui village. As for the cow, he allowed it to follow its That's temperament. It. He didn't rush it. And when it was nearly time for lunch with the city folk, Xiaowan then called to the cow, and then they walked to the northern entrance of Shuangshui village. Dozens of people are waiting back home for me and my cart of firewood. And you signal me wrong. The tractor's in the canal. Oh, no, the no, wood's no. ruined. What's what now? What's going on? Huh? He ruined all the firewood. Arrest this man now. Stop it. What do you think you're doing? What is this, huh? What is this? Stay away from him. Don't you dare touch him. He is the reason why the tractor fell into the canal. And you will arrest him for that? Everyone here knows he's mentally challenged. You asked him to help reverse the cart. Now it fell. Whose fault is that? It's your fault that the firewood is ruined. Huh? Who are you anyway? His name is Sun Xiaowan. You don't know Sun Xiaowan? You must live a hundred kilometers away from here. You're not part of Shigaji commune, are you? And who might you be? I am Jin Jin Wu. He's the leader of Shuang Shui's Jin Xiao Wang from the second production team. <laughs> Settle down, you'll be fine. <laughs> Now, Father. <laughs> hey, you there, run faster! Hey, hurry up with the food. Meal time starts soon. Hey, man. High class cigarettes. Oh, yes. This should be good. Great stuff. <laughs> if you three don't mind, when you're piling the dirt, can you do it a lot slower? That will mean fewer trips from me. Is that all right? Here, here. Take these. But we can't. What's there to fear? Listen, you'll live to be 70. You're just earning a living. Take this. You can smoke it later. Do it during your break time. Who can tell if it's yours or mine? Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. All right, let's just take it. Put it in your pocket. <sighs> My ancestors, they were scholars, chosen for civil service at the king court. Oh. <laughs> we were considered nobles here. Then my grandfather took over. Mm. That's when we went broke. That's huh? My father was a well-known bum around these parts. When Hu Zona of Gomida started a battle here, mm. my mother gave birth to me in an oven. Up on that hill. My father died the next year. It was a mother who raised me all the way until I was 19. Then she died too. 1966. Mm -hmm. I was left to fend for myself on this planet. Those days were a nightmare. I was a bum. <laughs> That's so sad. We've been bums for three generations. It's in the blood. <laughs> Being a bum is in our blood. <laughs> what are you doing? Get back to work. Father. You should look down. Help me find it. Find what? Look for a hole in the ground to swallow me! All my life, I never asked for an easy life for myself. I just want my children to live a decent life. To keep their head up and speak like human beings. I... Look at you. You've got me looking at the ground in shame. But, Father... Don't call me that. You're a disgrace. How come I'm a disgrace? I'm a person who experienced life. I slapped around, but what else did I do wrong? 
All right, I carried a gun, I played around, and I gambled too. That and you owe a ton of money to people. Every spring festival, what year did you come home? You hid from those you owe money to. Since you married my daughter, have you spent the new year with her? You were really born in the right place, that village of yours. It's Guanzhua. Yes, I know. You're that rotten container. Easy, easy now. What on earth? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> what in the world are you doing? What do you mean, Father? What were you looking at? Uh, nothing, Father. Don't give me that. You were just waiting for someone to order you around. Stop staring at that woman. Do you want to die? You're no. such an idiot. No, father. I'm just so tired is all. I've never done this much work in my life. My body is so sore. It's like it's been lashed by a leather whip. I'm telling you, father. I'd rather go to prison than do this kind of work. You listen father. to me. Father. <laughs> Chowan, hey, Chowan, Chowan, leave him alone. Hey, what are you doing here? Go home, father. I'll do your work for you. Go home and do what? Isn't it enough for you that there's two of us here? What you should be doing now is hurry to the commune, talk to Bai Mingxuan and Xu Gong about Mang Yang's early release. Your sister is sick with grief at home, crying with her children. Don't worry about For that, father. For heaven's sake, you're the production team leader. Don't worry, I'll deal with him. Wang Mang Yang. <laughs> Cigarette? This is called eye drops. This is a painkiller, Grandma. When your eyes begin to hurt, just use this, okay? My ping ping is all grown up. <laughs> Here. Uh, it's Anan. I'm glad to see you're back. You look uh, all right, Grandma. Anan. Grandma, you should stop crying. <laughs> she isn't crying. Those are eye drops. Oh, so when did you come back? It's a good thing I came back, or I wouldn't have known something serious was happening. Shawan, I'm glad you're back. Your brother-in-law. Sister, it's all right. Look, your eyes are puffy from crying. Take care of yourself, please. Sister, you better get the rations ready quickly, and please add extra biddings. I this already very... told her that. I'll bring them to our brother-in-law. This entire situation we're in is killing all of us. If we want to get our bum brother-in-law out, there's no one to turn to except the commune leaders. Do you know any of them, huh? The leaders of the commune? Uh, Uncle Futang is the branch secretary. He knows Director Shu very well. Oh. Maybe I can find him, ask him to talk to Director Shu. That could work. It's worth a try. Hmm. Oh, wait. Here. I have money and meal tickets. Renya gave them to me. I spent some of it to buy medicine for Grandma. I think Sister Renya just means well. I plan to give her back what's left of it. That's good. Give them back. She invited me to have a meal at her uncle's house. Ah, oh, you managed to have a decent <laughs> meal, kid. So what did you eat there? I had soda. <laughs> well, the important thing is, Sister Renya wants you to know that she wants you to visit her once you have the time. What for? I don't know. She said you should visit her. If she didn't say, it's not important. Listen, Xiaoping, why don't we split up the work? I'll look for Uncle Futang, and you take care of bringing those beddings to that idiot. Take Father's place so he can come home. Sure, I'll do just that. Oh, by the way, look for Uncle. He is a branch committee member of the brigade, after all, and director of the school committee. He holds three jobs at once, so he has to be an important man. He must be an important person of the village, so his words must carry a lot of weight, right? All right. And Xiaoping, I'll take care of things at home, so please don't worry. Just worry about your studies. I know. Mamanya, don't say anything rude, all right? Are you going to let me talk or not? All right, yeah. talk, 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 please. Let me see. Ha, my goodness. I don't know Father. what day it was. All I can tell you was it was rather peculiar. 
<laughs> anyway, that day I was thinking about getting married. I picked the daughter of Sun Yo Ho. Lan Wawa was her name. She was pretty and strong. She chops wood. She fetches water. She tells the garden of the house. She does practically all the work while I do nothing. So I hit the jackpot. Am I right? <laughs> right, right, right. That's right. Do the work anyway. Mm -hmm. I thought I won't have any beddings to sleep on tonight. There are rations in the beddings. Eat it, then throw it out. Mm. By the way, how are Modan and Gordon doing? They're at home. Oh, that's good. That's good. Oh, tell your sister not to worry. I'm fine here. Xiaoping. I'm Lu Gami, the commune's clerk. You see, I've spoken to Director Shi. He said your father may go home now. He can go home today? Yes, he can go home. Ask him to come back tomorrow. He still has to apologize. Tell Xiao Wan it's all I can do for now. I'm really sorry about this. No. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, 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 wait. Xiaoping, Xiaoping. Come here for a second. I have to tell you something. Tell your big sister. There are packets of rat poison at home. No, no, I've hidden them quite well. Tell her to be careful or the children might eat them. Hey, Xiaoping, Xiaoping, there's something else. Wa Meng Ya. A person should at least try to be decent. Aunt! Uncle Futong! Uh, Hi! Come on, you're here. You're making shoes. Yes. <laughs> is Uncle oh, Futong here? Your uncle is at home. Where'd he go? Uh, he said he was going to a meeting at the commune. To a meeting at the commune? A criticism meeting will take place there today. Oh, he didn't say anything. All right, Aunt. Uh, I will look for him at the meeting at the school. You take care, okay? Yes. You better get going then. Yes! Is he gone? He left. So, uh, did you tell him, you know? I said what you told me to say. I lied to Xiaowan's face. Xiaoping! Xiaoping! I'm glad to see you here. <laughs> oh, you're here too. Is U Chang home? U Chang? Oh God, that man has been so busy lately. They're holding a meeting at the school tonight. He's deputy commander, so he's at the school. He's hard at work. The others are also letting me lead. <laughs> you know what? They left me in charge of decorating the venue. We're all really busy right now. Please tell Utian. I won't get in his way. Tell him to look for me. We should talk. Uh, Xiaoping, will you go to the criticism meeting tonight? I'm going. To Runsheng's house. This is important. This is important, young man. Wh what are you doing? It's Fang Ying. I'm sorry, but I'm not bowing to you. I'm bowing to your red kilted jacket. That jacket, it's very colorful. It's red. The color of the revolution. I am wearing this tonight, at the meeting! Branch Secretary, I think this is too obvious. Wherever you hold this meeting, the host village benefits from it. But if it's held exclusively, and if it's held properly at Shuang Shui Village, Tian Futang will receive all the accolades from our peers. He should thank Deputy Director Zi. It isn't surprising that of the dozens of villagers in Shigeshi, Shu Zhi Go decided to get close to Qian Futang of Shuangshui. If he does well and Qian Futang is impressed, word of his performance will spread through the county and straight into the ears of his younger brother, who also happens to be Deputy Director Qian Fuja. Let's see if that would help Shu Zhi Go. Maybe he'll be sent to county administration. That's for sure. We'll see. So if Tianer needs to be criticized, I will not object to your decision. If no one scolded, 
At Shuang Shui tonight, then I will guarantee you this. It will be hard for you to report to Director Shu. Huh? Why do I have to be the one to report this? It's going to be cold at night. I'm going home to get some clothes. As for you, you should report to Director Shu. Uh. Oh. oh, hello there, Fungi. <laughs> hello there. <laughs> Why are you here? Can't I be here? You tell. I just met our big brother. Oh. He said you should go and see him. Do it now. Right now? The criticism meeting is about to start. I think he wants you to talk to Director Shi about Wamanya because he wants him exempted and sent home. Wamanya? It's bad enough he's lazy and doesn't work. He's engaged in illegal things, like unlawful trading. Hard labor is what he needs, or he'll never change. Yes, that's right. This is important for the revolution. This isn't about family. Oh, get going then. I don't think brother is going to go to the criticism meeting anyway. So you should go talk to him, but come back soon. I'll fix the venue. By the way, definitely no favoritism. You're right about that. This meeting is for the revolution. Are you listening? Yes, I am. <laughs>